Today's video takes us to Europe, a large and ever-changing landscape, politically, economically, and socially. European history is vast and something that people spend their entire lives studying. But today we're going to dive into five mysteries that still haunt Europe. Number 5 On March 31, 1922, six members of the Gruber family were killed by an unknown assailant in their Hinterkaifeck farmstead located in Germany. In the lead up to their murders, the Gruber family and those around them noticed strange goings on and has led people to believe that the Hinterkaifeck farm is haunted by a malevolent force. Andreas Gruber, the head of the family, noticed footprints in the snow leading from the nearby woods to his front door but no footprints were leading back. The maid who worked for the family also quit just a few months before the murder as she claimed to have heard strange noises coming from the attic of the building. After hearing these noises on several occasions, she became terrified and refused to work for the Gruber family, fleeing to find another job. On April 1, 1922, passing coffee sellers Hans and Edward Shirovsky arrived at the Hinterkaifeck farm, hoping to do business, but nobody answered. The pair decided to scope out the farmhouse, but saw no one on the property. Days passed and the Gruber family still hadn't been heard from. None of the children had attended school and they were not seen at church for Sunday service. It wasn't until April 4, 1922 that intrigue turned to worry and neighbors went around to see for themselves. The discovery made by the neighbors would shake them to their very core. Inside of the Hinterkaifeck farmhouse, each member of the Gruber family lay dead on the floor. They'd been killed one by one with a farm tool similar to an axe before the killer moved to a different area of the house to strike again. As this was 1922, there wasn't much thought or consideration put into forensics and the crime scene had already been disturbed by multiple people by the time police had arrived. Police and locals were left in shock. Who would want to wipe out an entire family in such a horrible way? As the investigation continued, it was found that the killer had stayed in the farmhouse for a few days after the attack. They had fed the family's livestock and cooked meals in their kitchen, using up the family's supply of bread. Everything else in the home was in order. No money or valuables was taken, so the motive of a robbery was quickly ruled out. They did little to help investigators as it only deepened the mystery. Who would want the Gruber family dead and what did they stand to gain? There have been numerous suspects in the Hinterkaifeck murders, but there's never been enough evidence to formally charge anyone with the crime. Almost 100 years later, the mystery is still in the hearts and minds of many Germans and it appears we may never know the truth. Number 4 On January 25, 2010, builders working on the construction site of Angel Street, Densick Street, and Miller Street in Manchester made a horrific discovery. When they were preparing the land to be redeveloped into offices, they came across the skeletal remains of a female between the ages of 18 and 35. Her body had been wrapped in blue carpet in an attempt to conceal her body as trash. Police were immediately called to the scene and her remains were taken away for further analysis. The coroner deduced that the woman was of either European or Indian Middle Eastern heritage. She was estimated to be between 5 foot 4 and 5 foot 7. She had various pieces of dental work such as fillings and her upper right first molar was missing, something that would be noticeable when she smiled. Her cause of death was linked to homicide as she was found to have had a broken neck, clavicle and jaw. Even more shocking to investigators and the locals of Manchester was her post-mortem index. It's estimated that she had died in the 1970s or 80s, meaning that her body had been buried there for 30 to 40 years. She was discovered wearing a blue jumper, a blue bra, and a green pinafore dress with a distinctive 1970s style pattern. Near her body, police also discovered a handbag, tights, orange, dark blue and blue carpets, along with one black stiletto. It's believed that the piece of carpet was used to cover her body and was cut from a Ford Catalina as the carpet had a hole where the gear stick and handbrake would be. Greater Manchester police have compared her DNA to 400 profiles for missing women, but have never found a match. Detective Chief Inspector Joanne Rawlinson told BBC, 
It's vitally important that we identify her to give some closure to her family, but also to help us investigate who took her life. She was the victim of a violent physical and possible sexual assault, and I'm determined to find out who she is and who took her life. If you have any information, you're urged to contact the Greater Manchester Police at 44161-872-5050 or 020-8463-1120. Number 3 The next mystery takes us to Sweden in May of 1808. A small town of villagers began to experience a strange phenomenon that still puzzles the Swedish population to this day. As they were working out in the farms underneath the scorching sun, the sky suddenly turned gray. Wondering what was going on, they looked up into the sky and saw large dark spheres moving towards the sun. The sun was also becoming dimmer and dimmer as if someone had turned it down with the dimmer switch. The spheres raced towards the sun and moved together in a straight line for two hours before disappearing out of sight. Some of the mysterious spheres fell from the sky but disintegrated before they hit the ground. One scientist remarked, they resemble air bubbles that children use to produce from soap suds by means of a reed. When the spot where such a ball had fallen was immediately examined, nothing was to be seen but a scarcely perceptible film, similar to a cobweb, was still changing colors but soon dried up and vanished. The spheres continued eastwards until they fell out of sight. The sun brightened once more, and locals were left dazed and confused. Many had thought that these were passing UFOs and the spheres falling from the sky was their attempt at communicating with them. As of 2020, the mystery of the Swedish spheres still puzzles scientists and UFOlogists. Number 2 In November of 2015, World News began reporting that Norwegian fishermen had encountered a bizarre reddish-purple slime that was covering their sonar equipment and ruining their fish. It wasn't just one crew of fishermen. In fact, fishermen across the coasts of northern Norway, around Lingenfjord, began reporting the same phenomena. Scientists from the Arctic University of Norway were called to investigate, but even they were left scratching their heads. One reporter said, quote, Mucus now covers a huge area of the fjord. We're talking millions of cubic meters. The images we're picking up from the echo sounders and other equipment are totally atypical. Other scientists at the Institute of Marine Research have speculated that the purple slime was caused by a dead cigar comb jellyfish, but five years later, there's still no conclusive evidence pointing to that cause. Fishermen are still sometimes plagued by the bizarre purple slime, which not only interferes with their equipment, but also threatens their livelihood as it spoils their fish. The purple slime of Lingen Fjords is one of Norway's greatest natural mysteries. Number 1 During the height of the Second World War, Four young boys were out in Hagley Wood. The boys planned to spend the day poaching and looking for birds' nests, something that the landowner, Lord Cobham, would have chased them off for. Instead of finding birds or eggs, the boys made a discovery that would forever be burned into their memories. They chose to look inside of a large witch elm tree, thinking it would be a good place to find a bird's nest. When they looked inside, they were met with a human skull, complete with hair and teeth. As the boys were trespassing on privately owned land, they put the skull back and ran home, swearing to keep their discovery a secret as they didn't want to get in trouble. However, one of the boys couldn't keep it to himself. What he discovered circled around and around in his mind, and he couldn't keep the secret any longer, so he told his parents, who in turn alerted police. Police rushed down to the witch elm with the help of the young boy and discovered not just a skull, but a complete skeleton with shoes, a wedding ring, and pieces of clothing. The next step was to remove the remains and have them examined. The coroner determined that the remains were of a woman who had died around 18 months prior to her discovery. As most of the world was embroiled in the Second World War, it was especially hard for police to discover the woman's identity. Hundreds upon thousands of people had been displaced by the conflict and many had simply vanished off the face of the earth. Faced with thousands of missing persons reports and only skeletal remains, the case quickly ran cold. 
1944, graffiti began popping up in the surrounding areas. It read, Who Put Bella in the Witch Elm? Hagley Wood. The graffiti has since continued to pop up in and around the area, leaving investigators to wonder if her killer is still among them. It wasn't until 2018 that they were finally presented with a facial estimation of Bella created by Carolyn Wilkinson of Dundee University. She shared her estimation of photographs of the remains found in Hagley Wood as the skull had since been lost by police. Theories about Bella's death range from her being an undercover spy who was dispatched when it was thought she was defected to the other side, to Bella being part of a black magic ritual sacrifice. The truth will not come out until we know the true identity of Bella in the Witch Elm. Only then will the mysterious graffiti stop and a grieving family have answers for what happened to their missing loved one. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But I've been Ty Knotts and I'll catch you guys in the next video.